Hi, I'm Dr. Yosef with Derek, and the purpose of today's video is to answer the question, can I taper off my psychiatric medication while I'm still having protracted withdrawal symptoms? And so this is especially relevant to antidepressants and benzodiazepines. As you may know, they both have very similar protracted withdrawal symptoms. And the topic for this video actually came from a viewer who recently commented on a video uh, called Sergey, and he was asking about his wife who um, appears to be tapering from an antidepressant, she's having disabling withdrawal symptoms. And he said, you know, does she need to, you know, can, can she still taper while she's having these symptoms? Do I need to stop, etc.? cetera. Um, and so I'm gonna provide general, my general feedback and the general approach I take to this in, in my practice. So, uh, so first we need to recap. So what is the protracted withdrawal sy uh, 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 syndrome? So if you are, uh, listener to this channel, you know that I, I think of it as neurological damage, essentially. And the reason why I think withdrawal makes it confusing is because withdrawal gives you the sense that if you just reinstate the drug, everything goes away. And now, this is not the case for the people that have protracted withdrawal injury. The um, disabling symptoms don't go away. So it's kind of this injury. And so how do you taper if you have this neurological injury, you are still on the drug, and uh, you're afraid of exacerbating it. And of course you're afraid of exacerbating it because a lot of the times this was caused by a rapid withdrawal. And I'm gonna tell you how. So um, there's a couple options. One, if you are in the having severe debilitating protracted withdrawal symptoms, you can wait. There is nothing, well, at least from my perspective, I don't think there's a problem with, with waiting. Some people may say, you know what, I think just having the drug on board is gonna make me worse. That's not been my experience so far. I guess there's some basis for it, maybe if this is ongoing toxicity, but the way I really see it is there's some kind of incident, you know, where, where it's an abrupt withdrawal or there's just this period of time eventually where you go into tolerance withdrawal and then the damage happens and then it's kind of done. You know, maybe there's some evolving damage, but that's not really how I think about it. You may disagree with me, but the way I address these patients is usually, okay, the damage is done, so now what are we gonna do about it? I actually think it's okay to wait. You know, if you feel like there's too much going on right now and you just wanna wait it out until you get kind of some stability, you can do that. However, eventually people get frustrated. They may wait for, you know, three to six months and they, they may not notice any improvement. And then they start to think, well, you know, why am I even on this medication? Maybe it's making things worse. Honestly, I'm not sure. So if you're in that kind of situation, uh, then you say, okay, well, how am I going to get off? And honestly, you just follow the exact same um, uh, principles, which I normally talk about, which is a flexible, slow taper. I think a reasonable amount to start with is 5% every three to four weeks. You could do it a little faster if you want to, but if you're having debilitating symptoms, you usually want to err on the slow side. And 5% and cuts, that may even be a bit too much for some people. So it's kind of this experiment. You're going to try it and you're gonna see if things get any worse. And if they don't get too much worse, I think it's okay for you to continue to proceed with your taper, even though you're having debilitating symptoms. If you do notice an abrupt worsening, then you wanna slow the rate down. You might take it down to 2.5% every four weeks or something like that, and then try there. And, and then you kind of keep on going in that way. Um, I mean, the idea is that you're not going, you know, that you're going to come down very slowly and gradually and that any of these big drop, you know, and that you're not going to aggravate things, you know, too much by taking these big drops. And so um, that's my general download on that topic. Can you withdraw while you're having severe symptoms? Uh, I think so. And, and I, I do this with a lot of my patients. So I hope this was helpful. And um, please let me know your experience with this, um, especially the part of, um, I guess, whether you think that there's this ongoing damage. This is something that I've always kind of questioned myself. I'm leaning towards, you know, probably not in the majority of patients, but I'd love to get your perspective on it. Um, drop comments below. I'll try and answer them. And uh, thank you for watching.